This training video outlines the steps to create your first PLC Siemens circuit in Automation Studio using IC standards for electrical control. In the process of recreating this circuit, the user will learn how to create a PLC circuit with generic components from the library, how to do circuit addition, how to assess component properties and help, how to create a ladder logic and how to run the simulation and analyze the circuit. In this video, we will create a circuit where a pneumatic cylinder will be controlled by PLC. All components needed for this first circuit are contained in the main pneumatic library. Simply click on it to display components. In order to create the circuit, move the components from the library onto the schematic. To do so, select the desired component from the library, in this case a pneumatic pressure source and drag and drop it onto the schematic while holding down the left mouse click. Similarly, drag and drop a double acting cylinder, a 5x2 wave valve with a manual command and a solenoid, and two exhausts. To zoom in the schematic, go to the view tab of the ribbon bar and click on zoom in function under the zoom tools. Other zoom functions like zoom page, previous zoom, zoom all components can also be found at this location. Alternatively, to zoom in and out, press and hold down the control key, then scroll up to zoom in or scroll down to zoom out of the page. Software will zoom where you are pointing your cursor. To pan the document, click on the panning function of zoom tools. When you click on the panning function, the cursor transforms into a hand and then you can pan the document by holding the left mouse click and moving the cursor. Alternatively, you can press and hold down the space bar and move the cursor to pan the document. To disable this function, just right click on the document. Now connect all these components to create the pneumatic circuit. To connect components, move your cursor over a red connection port and click when the target sign appears, release the button, draw your line with the cursor and click on a second connection port to establish connection between those two components. Both connection ports automatically become black when linked. In order to connect the exhaust with the directional valve, select an exhaust and drag and drop its connection port over the connection port of the 5x2 wave valve. Similarly, connect the other exhaust to the valve. In order to connect the working ports of the 5x2 wave directional valve with the cylinder, you need to change path during connection. To do so, when drawing a line while moving your cursor, Click when you need to create a 90 degree turn and connect. Similarly, connect the other working port of the direction valve with the cylinder. Now that all the components are connected, you can start the simulation. Go to the simulation tab of the ribbon bar and click on normal simulation icon under the control tools to start the simulation. While in simulation, when hovering over a component, if the cursor turns into a hand icon, you can click to interact with that component. The directional valve on this circuit has two commands, a lever and a solenoid. Since the control circuit is not yet created, activate the manual command by clicking on the lever to get the extension and retraction of the cylinder. Now stop the simulation by clicking on the stop simulation icon under the control tools. Let's learn how to add the PLC ladder logic. Before that, make sure that the layout leaves you enough space to add the ladder diagram on the same page. To do so, go to the view tab and click on zoom page function to see your entire page. Now click and hold the left button of the mouse and move the cursor to select all the components. Then release the mouse button. After that drag and drop the selected components to make space on your page. Now add PLC input output cards. For that navigate through the electrical control IC standard library. 
select the PLC cards category and drag and drop a PLC input card and a PLC output card. Make sure to place the input card on the top and the output card on the bottom. Please note that the same logic circuit can be built using the JIC standard. Use the zoom commands to improve the visibility of the circuit. Now you need to connect the electrical components to the input card. From the electrical control IC standard main library, drag and drop a common 0 volts, a power supply 24 volts and a normally open push button. When inserting an electrical control component on the schematic, the software asks for an alias for the component which is displayed on the schematic and is used to identify the component while linking it with other components. Give it an alias PB1 and apply. Connect all these components to the input card in this way. You can rearrange a component's position by hovering the cursor over the component and moving the mouse to the left. Similarly, connect the electrical components to the output card. Drag and drop a common 0 volts a power supply 24 volts and a solenoid DCAC. Give it alias A plus. And connect these components to the output card. Note that the same applies to the JIC standard. Now that we have connected the electrical control components, we can focus on the ladder diagram which contains the logic in that circuit. From the ladder for Siemens PLC main library, drag and drop a rung on the schematic. Your rung may be too big, too small or overlap on your cards. Simply click on the green square to resize it. Now again from the ladder for Siemens PLC main library, drag and drop a normally open contact and a coil to create the logic circuit. When inserting a ladder logic Siemens PLC component on the schematic, the software asks you to give it an alias. This will be the tag displayed on your schematic and will be used for linking components. Give it an alias out note and apply. Now connect these components. The normally open contact has a question mark symbol above it. This means that it is not linked to any electrical component and hence link it to the input card. For that you need to access the component properties window of the component. To open the component properties window of the normally open contact, right click on it and select component properties. You can also open the component properties window by double clicking over the component. Click on the variable assignment from the left side menu. Use the filter from the compatible simulations variable section to sort the variables and only show the one matching your criteria. Here. The normally open contact needs to be linked with PLC input card. So filter the alias IN of the input card. Since the input signal is received at IN0, so double click on it to create the link. 
you can observe the question mark symbol has been replaced by e1 underscore one dot in not confirming that the link is created. You can also see in the association span that now there is an association between the two components. Close the window. Similarly, link the coil to the out node of the output card. All components in Automation Studio also have a help file describing their functionality. Right click on a component and select context help. In this window, you can get information about the operation of the component and its features. This window also provides a description of each property of the component available in the data tab of its component properties window, such as properties related to its modeling, characteristics, external data, operating condition and so on. Close the window. You can also assess the help file by clicking on the component and pressing F1 key on the keyboard. Now link the electrical solenoid of the directional valve with the electrical solenoid of the output card as the question mark symbol beside it suggests that it is not linked to any electrical component. Double click on it to open the component properties window. Click on the variable assignment from the left side menu. Click on the left solenoid icon of the directional valve. Here left solenoid of the pneumatic directional valve has to be linked with the solenoid of the electrical control circuit which has alias A+. So write A+, in the filter. Once identified, double click on the alias to create the link and close the window. Now that all the components are connected and all the links are created, you can start the simulation to see your circuit come to life and the interaction between different technologies. While in simulation, click on PV1 to energize IN node which will close the open contact and which will activate the out node to energize A plus on the output card and on the directional valve which makes the cylinder extend. Each time you release the PV1 button, the cylinder retracts because of the spring on the directional valve. Let's change the schematic so that one push on PV1 makes the cylinder extend completely. For that, stop the simulation first and then move the coil out node to connections below by disconnecting it. To do so, press and hold down the shift key, then click on it and drag it to the required place on the schematic. This will relieve room to add internal bit on the first rung. Now from the ladder for Siemens PLC main library, drag and drop two normally open contacts. And a coil that is internal bit and give it an alias B3 colon not. Connect the added components to complete the circuit in this fashion. Now link the two normally open contacts to the internal bit relay B3 colon not. Once these links are made, you can launch the simulation. By clicking on PV1 this time, the cylinder extends fully but doesn't retract since there is no element to de-energize the out node which is now latched. Let's add a timer which makes the cylinder retracts after 5 seconds. Stop the simulation. Navigate through the ladder for Siemens PLC library. Select the timers category and drag and drop the on delay timer on the schematic. From the bit logic category, drag and drop a normally open contact. and a coil.
name the coil timer underscore dn connect the on delay timer normally open contact and the timer underscore dn bit with the rung Now link the newly inserted contact to the internal bit B3 colon not. Once the on delay timer is in place and connected, add the timer done bit timer underscore dn in the circuit to de-energize B3 colon not once the preset time on the timer is reached. Drag and drop a normally closed contact from the bit logic category. And place it on the first line between e1 underscore 1 dot in not and b3 colon not. When dragging a component from the library, if you drop it directly onto a line, it will automatically insert that component into the circuit. This will not work however if you drop the component on your working space before. For example, if this contact is dragged and dropped on the workspace first and then if you drag and drop it directly on a line, you can observe that the ports are still red. This indicates that the component is not inserted correctly. Delete it by clicking on it and pressing the delete key of your keyboard. Now link the normally closed contact to the timer underscore dn bit. Open the linking window. Search for timer underscore dn in the filter section. Once identified double click on it and create the link. By default, the timer has a preset time of 10 seconds. Change its value to 5 seconds. To do so, double click on the on delay timer to open the component properties window. Click on the data tab from the left side menu. When the star is filled orange, it means that only the favorite fields are displayed. Click on the star to display all the fields and find the preset field. Change the value of this field to 5 seconds and exit the window. Now that your circuit is completed, launch the simulation to see your entire circuit come to life. Click on PV1, the cylinder will extend and the on delay timer will be activated. Once it reaches the 5 second preset time, the timer underscore dn contact will open de-energizing B3 colon not and the cylinder will retract since out knot will no longer be activated. Similarly, you can create different PLC circuits in Automation Studio.